Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on tool and die design. We are on module two, that is design of cutting tools. In the previous lecture, we discussed cutting tool materials. Uh, now we are going to discuss design of single point cutting tools. And by the end of this lecture, you should be able to define the following nomenclature of a single point cutting tool. So there is a back rake angle, side rake angle, end relief angle, side relief angle, end cutting edge angle, side cutting edge angle, and the tool uh, or the nose radius. You should be able to select appropriate tool angles for specific combination of tool, workpiece materials, and other factors. So as we discussed in the last lecture as well, that there are two principal aspects of a cutting tool. So there is a tool material and there is tool geometry. The last lecture we discussed tool material. Today we are going to start our discussion on tool geometry. And once we talk about tool geometry, actually we have to specify whether we are talking about a single point cutting tool or a multiple point cutting tool. So examples of single point cutting tools are turning tools, boring tools, shaping tools, and the tools are used with the planar machine. And the examples of multiple point or multiple cutting edge tools are the drill builds, the reamers, the tapping tools, the milling tools, the broaching tools, and uh, the saws used on sawing machines. So today we are going to discuss single point cutting tool geometry. So these are the parts of a single point cutting tool. So uh, first of all, we have the shank. So shank is the body of the tool or the part held in the tool holder. So a cutting tool is held through this uh, shank in the tool holder. So this is the shank. Then we have the base that is the bottom surface of the tool shank. So this is the base. So this one is the base or, or the bottom surface of the tool shank. Then we are having the flank, that is the surface of the tool adjacent to and below the cutting edge. So this is the surface actually that is adjacent to and below the cutting edge. So this is the flank. So actually this one shown here is the side flank and there is another surface actually uh, that is adjacent to and below the cutting edge and that is this one. So that is on this side. If we, if we have a look at this cutting tool from front, so that is called end flank. So we have a side flank and we have an end flank. So this is the side flank. So this is adjacent to and below the cutting edge and this is the end flank. And finally, we have the face. The face is the surface against where the chip bears as it is separated from the work. So this is the face. So this is the face. So this one is the face. Then we have the flank and this as a whole. This one as a whole is the cutting edge. So you could see here as well that this is the cutting edge. So in order to better understand and remember different angles actually, uh, you, you should keep in mind some very basic concepts. So there are two angles actually that relate to the face of the cutting tool. Two angles of the cutting tool relate to the flank and two angles relate to the cutting edge. So the two angles actually that relate to the face of the cutting tool of a single point cutting tool are the rake angles. And the two related to the cutting edge are the cutting edge angles. And two angles related to, uh, to the flank are actually the relief angles. So this is very simple actually to understand uh, the angles that we will discuss briefly on the next slide uh, that to which part of the tool these angles relate. So again, two angles relate to the face, two relate to the cutting edge and two relate to the flank. And just to give you a broader idea that one of the rake angles uh, relates to the backward slope, slope of the face in this direction and the other angle relates to, relates to the slope of this face in this direction. So these are two rake angles. And the slope of the, of the 
side flank actually defines the side relief angle and the slope of the end flank, this part defines the end relief angle. And similarly, this cutting edge has two parts. So this is actually one part of the cutting edge that is the side cutting edge. And this one is actually the end cutting edge. So one angle relates to the side cutting edge and the other relates to the end cutting edge. And finally, we have the nose radius that is actually at the interjection of the uh, side cutting edge and end catching, uh, cutting edge. So if we look at the side view of the single point cutting tool, then this backward slope of the face, I hope you remember that this was the face of the single point cutting tool. So backward slope of the face is the back rake angle. And another angle that we can see in the side view is the slope of the end flank. So I hope you remember that this was the end flank. So this angle is actually the end relief angle. And from front view, we, we can see the slope of the of the face of the cutting tool. So this was backward slope was actually the back rake angle and the slope towards uh, this direction. That is in this case, the side rake angle. So these two angles, two rake angles actually relate to the face of the cutting tool. Another angle that we, we can see in the, in the front view is actually this uh, slope of the side flank. So this one, this angle is the side relief angle. Side relief angle. So we are actually in, in these cases, uh, looking at the cutting tool from front. So we, we could see the side rake angle and the side relief angle. Then from top view, we could see two more angles. So this is the angle made by the side cutting edge. So this is the side cutting edge angle. And this is the angle made by end cutting edge. So this is end cutting edge angle. And finally, we have this nose radius. So again, uh, let me repeat uh, in order to make you remember these angles easily. So two angles relate to the, to the face. So they are a back rake angle and side rake angles, two related to the flank. Uh, one related to the uh, side flank is the side relief angle and the one related to the end flank is the end relief angle. And two relate to the cutting edge. So we have end cutting edge angle and side cutting edge angle. Uh, so in the front view, actually, we are uh, seeing two angles that are side rake angle and side relief angle. And in the top view, we could see two cutting edge angles and the remaining two are back rake angle and end relief angle. So you can have a look at this angle uh, in different ways, but this is, I think, the easiest way to remember the two angles related to the face two related to the cutting edge and two related to the, uh, to the flank. Now, this is, the, uh, this is the standard sequence of mentioning these angles. So first we have the back rake angle, then side rake angle, end relief, side relief, and cutting edge, side cutting edge angle, and finally the nose radius. So in this case, basically we are having this 10 degree, the back rake angle, 20 degree to be the side rake, seven degree, the end relief angle, six degrees, side relief, eight degrees, end cutting edge, and 15 degrees, the side cutting edge angle, and this 0.8 mm, and the nose radius. So you could see all these angles here, uh, just as a, as a recall. So the back rake angle of 10 degrees, and you could see the side rake angle of 20 degree, so that is this one, side rake angle. 
So the two rake angles are mentioned first, then two relief angles. So end relief angle of seven degrees. So this angle related to the end flank, then the side relief angle of six degrees that is related to the side flank. And then we have uh, the end cutting edge angle of eight degrees and side cutting edge angle of 15 degrees. And finally, this nose radius of 0.8 mm. So this is how these angles are specified. So first we are having two rake angles, then two relief angles, and then two cutting edge angles, and finally the nose radius. We could find tables like these for recommended uh, values of the angles. So for example, if you are having a high speed steel uh, cutting tool, so in order to machine say certain grades of the mild steel, we are having certain range of side relief angle and the end or front relief angle, back rake angle and side rake angle. And you could find as these values for other materials, other workpiece materials like aluminum as well. And you might have uh, noticed by having a bird eye view of this table that for the case of aluminum, we are having the larger angles, especially the larger rake angles as compared to some other materials. And uh, we will discuss this point in one of the following slides uh, that what is the impact of these rake angles. So you could, you could find tables like these from the handbooks or from the, from the recommendations of different societies like Society of Automotive Engineers. So how, how could we select uh, different rake angles? So there are three types of rake angles, positive, negative, and zero. Just keep in mind that positive rake angle means if that in the case of back rake, the face of the uh, of the tool is sloping backward. So that is the back rake angle. Or in other words, uh, the included angle is small. So that is important to keep in mind. That included angle is small if we are talking about the positive rake angle. So the face slopes downwards away from the point. Negative rake angle is just the opposite. So included angle will be large in this case. So slope of the face will be upward. And zero rake means that this face will be straight, making a zero degree angle. So generally for the tougher cutting tool materials like high speed steel, we use uh, positive rake angles or in other words, smaller included angles. And for brittle materials, harder materials like carbides and ceramics, we use negative rake angles or, or larger included angles. So that should be kept in mind. So as a general rule, increasing the rake angle, that is more positive rake angles, or I repeat, by making the included angle small, that will reduce the cutting forces. Surface finish will be better and tool life will increase. So in order to make finishing cuts, we, we grind this face backward or we, we reduce the included angle. Decreasing the rake angles or increasing the included angle uh, causes a greater chip distortion and increases the res resistance to chip flow. So you could see that chips would flow something like this if we are having positive rake angle and they will have a resistance to, to flow once we are having a negative rake angle, so chips would break. And they produce rougher and more work hardened surfaces. So positive rake angles are used when cutting soft metals, low tensile strength metals, non-ferrous metals, long, small diameter uh, shafts having larger length to diameter ratio and materials which work hardened while being machined. Negative rake angles are used for machining high tensile strength materials. That is the harder materials where we are using heavy feeds. That is, we are making roughing cuts and the cutting is interrupted, just like in the case of milling. So in the case of turning, soft metals, uh, we use, uh, and for the thin material, we use positive rake angles. And for the harder workpiece material, or for the harder cutting tool materials, or for roughing cuts, or interrupted cuts, we use negative rake angles, 
or larger included angles. So in the rare case that a negative rake angle will be used with high speed steel because it's, it's a tough uh, cutting tool material. So it will not weaken by uh, reducing the included angle as will the ceramic and carbide tools. So they are generally reserved for carbide tools, these uh, negative rake angles and for ceramic tools and for cutting material, just like gray cast iron, malleable cast iron, cast steels, hot work die steels, tool steels, or in general, the hard work piece materials. Thank you very much.